Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today we are going to talk about some authors that have pushed their way into my favorites list this year. And I'm going to talk about the authors themselves, what they've written, what book pushed them into my favorites, because I've read all these this year and they have just really made a big impact on me and made me go, okay, this is an author for me. 100%. This is an auto buy. <laughs> the next time this author comes out with a book, I'm going to be buying it. And now I want to read some backlist stuff as well if I don't already, if I haven't already read them. Uh, but these are ones that just really have been standouts for me this year. And they're all authors that except for one, they're all offers I've read from before and really enjoyed their books. But then like now they're a favorite. There is one that's brand new, but I can, I can just foresee <laughs> this author being for me 100%. And um, apparently, this video is brought to you by the letter A, because every single author's first name starts with A. And I did not intend for that to happen. As I was making my list and writing them down, I went, there's a trend here. <laughs> like what is happening? <laughs> so that was just kind of a funny coincidence. Okay, we are going to start off with a bang because guys, this has been my favorite book of the entire year. And uh, we'll see if anything knocks it off. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that is Ashley Winstead. And the book that knocked her into favorites is The Last Housewife. This is a book that came out earlier this year. And I read it right when I got it like I think the day that I got it, I opened this book and started reading it and I was completely floored. This book took my breath away. It, um, yeah. So, uh, I just, it gave me so many feels. It actually made me feel like I was in the situation that these characters were in and I did not want to be there because it was very dangerous. And it, it just, it blew me away. Just the commentary in here and the dangers and the grayness of all the characters and the messed upness. It was fantastic. And um, this is a very, very dark book though. One of the darkest books I've read. So there is that. It does have to do with sex cults and kind of a culture around that. And it's, it's very, very uh, dark. So it's hard for me to recommend this to everybody because I don't think everybody can read this. Um, there are actually content warnings in the front of this book that the author provided, which I really appreciate that she did. So if you need content warnings, I would look at those first. But this book completely just floored me. Now, I read her debut release last year that was called In My Dreams, A Hold a Knife, which was another dark book. And I absolutely loved that book <laughs> last year. It was in my top 10 of last year. She does have another book that has been released. I do own it. I have not read it yet. It's called Fool Me Once. It's actually a romance. So it's a different genre. I have not read it yet, like I said, but I do plan to. Um, I do have it downstairs. So I just know, <laughs> definitely, at least on the thriller side, this is an author for me. And she is currently writing another thriller that's supposed to come out in 2023 that will be on my most anticipated. I will pre-order it. I will gobble it up 100%. And she is actually writing a sequel to the romance that she released too. So that's something that I would like to get read before too long so I can know whether or not I want the sequel. But Ashley Winstead 100% has my whole heart. Okay, the book that was on my number one of the entire year until I read The Last Housewife. <laughs> so this is now number two of the entire year, which that hasn't changed, is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Okay, so um, science fiction set in space scientist wakes up on he he comes to consciousness I won't say he woke up he comes to consciousness he is on a spaceship in the middle of space he's surrounded by dead bodies and he does not even remember his own name so that's where we start here um I read The Martian also by Andy Weir um and I loved it I was saying for a long time that was my favorite science fiction book but I think I liked this one more, <laughs> to be honest. I, I really think, and I don't know if it's the content or if it was the reading experience for me, to be honest. I mean, they could probably go hand in hand, but I listened to this on audio and I cannot recommend that enough. There is an element in this book that is just brought to another level when you listen to it. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to give any spoilers for this book. Um, it was fantastic. It was just, it was full of, just mysteriousness and 
Is he going to be okay? How is he going to get out of this? How is he going to figure things out? What's going on? You're also going back and forth between, you know, what he's dealing with right now and then how he got to even be on the spaceship, you know, like, so you're going back and forth a little bit in timelines too. Um, It was fantastic. A lot of science that went completely over my head for the most part, and I did not care. I was able to just kind of like glaze through those parts and it wasn't a big deal. They did, they weren't long enough that it took me out of the story at all. And it's just so entertaining. It was fantastic. So this is a high recommend for me. Like I said, it's going to be on my favorites of the year. Um, The Martian is also a favorite of mine. I have not read Artemis. I have not heard the best things about Artemis, but I do plan to still read it. So I'll read it at some point. I do have it on my Kindle already, but this is definitely, I would like to read it to get that experience as well. And then I can say that I've read all his books, but um, I'll go into that with like little lower expectations (laughs) than um, this one for sure. But This book is absolutely 100% fantastic. Okay, now we're going to go to the book where I've only read one by this author, but I am pretty positive. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to read all her books. Not, I'm pretty positive. I'm going to read all her books now and anything coming out, I will probably read as well. But that is Abby Jimenez and I read Part of Your World, which is a romance book that is an actual, like it's an age gap between an older woman and a man who's 10 years younger than her. They are from very different parts of um, their local area and just le- lead very, very different lives. She is a surgeon, um, an ER, or she's an ER doctor, sorry, an ER doctor in a very um, high stress job her family like kind of owns the hospital it's like this whole thing um he lives in a very small town he runs a bed and breakfast like they're they lead very different lives but something happens that brings them together and they start forming a relationship from there and it's very complicated and there's a lot of back and forth there's a lot of you know can this work can this not should we just be friends with benefits type thing um and how's that going to work moving forward type stuff so i loved it I loved it. There is a scene in this book that I don't want to talk in detail about, but I was laughing so hard. And I started texting Amanda from the Curly Reader because (laughs) she had just read it too. And I was like, oh my God, this scene. And she was like, I know. (laughs) And like, it's, it's a pretty epic. It's a pretty epic scene. It had me rolling on the ground laughing. It was fantastic. Um, There is going to be a companion one to this book that is coming out that follows um, the best friend in here who I loved. I loved her best friend, uh, Brie. And so Brie's getting her own book and I believe it's coming out next year. And I'm so excited for that one. Um, I will definitely be snatching that one up too. But she also has written um, some other books. I think she has three other books that I haven't read yet from what I'm understanding. Um, Let's see, there is The Friend Zone, which I think I have on audio, possibly, but I'm probably going to buy, like, I would I would get hard copies of all her books. So there's The Friend Zone, there's the Ever After playlist, which is seems to be her most popular, and then there's Life's Too Short. And I think they're all just kind of companion novels. I think they can all be read as standalone. You don't have to read them in order, but I think they're all kind of like, you know, you get a hint of this character in this book, but now here's their story, like type that type of thing. But the humor is on point. I absolutely love her humor in here. And I like that it was a little bit more than a romance. Like there was a little bit of conflict. There's a little bit of like, you know, it's not as easy as it seems, right? So it was fantastic. Okay. And the next author, I read two books from this year. I have read a book previously, which I honestly don't fully remember a whole lot about it. (laughs) I read it a very long time ago, but I've read two books from this author this year and they were both five stars. This one 100% will be in my favorites of the year. And I'm just, I'm excited to continue with this author now. And that is Alice Feeney and Daisy Darker. You guys, this book was so good. I, isolated setting, a family comes together after being kind of estranged from each other for quite a while. Um, they are gathering all at the grandmother's house to celebrate her birthday. It's pr- a pretty big birthday. And they, the, her house is like set on an island where if the tide is in, you cannot leave because the water completely um, covers the pathway that leads you off 
to the mainland. So it, when the tide is in, you cannot leave the house at all. But when the tide is out, then you can. So they are there fully knowing that they are going to be there overnight because of the timing of everything. They're going to be there for a while. So, um, but after the tide comes in, um, someone dies. And who did it? Because only family members are in this house. <laughs> What's the motive? Who did it? Why, why are people dying? What's going on? So it's kind of, it's definitely a nod to Agatha Christie's and then there were none. And I definitely got that feeling for it. I loved this. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Um, I was guessing I was trying to figure things out and so much happened in here that I was just like, what? <laughs> and oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so good. Um, and when I wasn't reading this book, I wish I, I was reading this book. Like I would put it down. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to put it down. I just wanted to read this consistently. Um, loved it. I also read Rock, Paper, Scissors by her and absolutely love that one too. That was another five-star book. I loved that book as well. Another isolated book actually. Um, and yeah, so I think I am like fully on board the Alice Feeney train. I do have some backlist of hers to read. I did read Sometimes I Lie, but that's the one that I don't fully remember a whole lot about. I would actually probably reread that one. Um, and then I think I have, I know who you are and I have his and hers on audio for sure which I've heard really, really good things about that one. So I definitely want to get into her backlist a little bit more. So I do have a couple that I would need to read um, and one that I would probably reread. But her next release, I'm going to be on board. And last but not least, we have the final A. <laughs> and that's Alex Michaelides. I loved this book. That's not a popular opinion. A lot of people did not like this book. It didn't work for them. I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this book and I, I thought it was great. Um, it definitely kept me guessing. And I just, I don't know. The whole time I was reading it, I was just enjoying myself. It was a good time for me. Uh, this follows a woman whose niece goes to school at Cambridge and she is um, dealing with the loss of her best friend. Her best friend has been killed on campus. Like it's a murder investigation. They're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and so this woman goes to be with her niece to give her comfort, to try to convince her to like maybe come home because there's a killer on the loose, but she's not having it. <laughs> so she ends up um, staying and trying to see what she can work out. She is also a psychologist. And so she fixates on this professor that is working there who is constantly surrounded by a group of young girls called the Maidens. She's fully convinced this is a cult <laughs> and is trying to basically pin this murder on this man. Um, and so you kind of go through, you walk through that whole thing. So I really liked it. I can understand the problems that people had with this book. I've read the reviews. I get it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just had a great time. I really, really, really like his writing. Really like his writing. And he does keep you guessing. I will say that. Um, I read The Silent Patient by him, which I absolutely love. That's one of my favorite thriller books of all time. I loved that book so much. This one I loved as well. Um, not quite as much as Silent Patient, but still it was a five-star read. So, and these are his only two releases. So I'm going to be waiting for another one. <laughs> so if he does write another book, I will be all over it. I will be pre-ordering it. Very excited. Um, because both of his releases have been five stars for me. Okay, guys. So those are some books that I read this year that have been five-star books for me that just completely put these authors at top notch for me. Just, okay, here's a favorite. From here on out, I will be auto buying their books and I'll be very excited when they release new ones. And some of them are consistent writers who like, I know they're going to have some more releases coming out very soon, early as next year. Some of them, I don't really know. I don't know if Alex Michaelides has a plan for any more books. Um, I'm assuming that Alice Feeney probably will. And Andy Weir, we don't know anything about that either. I don't know if he has plans to write any more or not, but I will be very much on the lookout for them if they do happen. Okay, that is it. Brought to you by the letter A. Because we have Alex, Alice, Abby, Andy, and Ashley. That was so funny.
Okay, let me know down below if you guys have read any authors this year that you've read for the first time or that you just read really, really great new releases and you're very excited about their work going forward. Let me know if you have any authors who have really pushed themselves up in your eyes because of what you've read recently. I would love to know that. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.